broadcast major uh, with, uh, and I got my uh, my bachelor's in in broadcast radio and television. Uh, I'm sure by this point they probably changed that a little bit because of the uh, change in the industry. I have a an associate's degree in theater as well. I've been professional, uh, a professional in broadcasting, which meant that they paid me uh, from 1977, but I consider 1974 when I first cracked the mic in Ashland was my time here. Currently, I'm in the Albany market, which is my hometown, and I work for um, iHeart Media, uh, everybody knows a major, major corporation, which has its pluses and minuses, depending on how you want to look at it. I work uh, primarily for uh, radio station WGY, um, a radio station that is that was the first in New York State. Uh, matter of fact, in um, 2022, WGY will celebrate its 100th anniversary. And that's amazing from there, just thinking about that, that that my resume has those call letters, even though it's a completely different station. But I'm in the news department, and part of what I do is multitask. So in addition to what I do for WGY, that you can hear me daily, uh, you can also hear me in Springfield, Massachusetts. You can hear me in New Haven, Connecticut. You can hear me in Providence, Rhode Island. You can hear me in Manchester and uh, Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Uh, from occasionally, you'll hear me in uh, Hudson and Poughkeepsie, New York. The story I always like to tell about how things have changed in broadcasting. A couple of years back, when Hurricane Irene hit the New York and New Jersey area, the iHeart stations in New York did not have a news organization. So, the news in New York City, the number one city in the world, was being sent from here in Albany, New York. So it's one of the coolest things. When I was a kid, I always wanted to be in New York City, and probably as I'm closing up on 60, I finally was, even when it was for a two-minute news report. But that's what we did. Um, when the Boston Marathon bomb went off, the iHeart stations at that time had no news operations. So Boston got their news on the marathon bombing from here in Albany, New York. One of the reasons why I got this job was, and I say this with pride, is because of my training at Ashland. And truth uh, story is that Ashland was the only school I applied to. I didn't want to, I didn't, I, I didn't know if I was really going to college or if I could even afford college. So on a whim, we tried it. I was very fortunate that, um, I got in, and the thing that I really enjoyed with the radio, television, slash broadcasting department at Ashland were the instructors. Um, I'm sure it's a variation of the same thing now, but the instructors at that time were real-world instructors. These were people, they, they were out in the field, they had worked professionally. These were not textbook instructors, textbook professors. They knew what they were talking about. And that very much inspired uh, what myself and a lot of other folks in that department led to. I decided to take a theater minor uh, at Ashland because, again, I enjoyed it and I knew I was going to do it. Um, I had no reservations about the fact that if I were to choose between being a broadcaster and, and being in, in the theater, my odds were probably better that I would be behind a microphone or in front of the camera than a, a, on a stage. Although, they, as I mentioned earlier, they do work hand in hand and my time on the stage, whether it was in any of the Ashland College Theater University uh, performances in the, that, that they put on tremendously helped me in my career because at times I would be at a concert that could have 30, 40, 50,000 people and I'd have to be on the stage to bring on an act and if you didn't have that experience of being able to perform in front of people it's a very intimidating experience. My first 
broadcasting job was actually right in Ashland. I started working part-time at WNCO AM and FM. And it was from there where I transitioned into my first full-time job. You have to learn everything. Um, if, if you know about news, if there's a news opportunity, take it. If there's an opportunity to do promotions and you studied something else, learn that. When you're first getting these jobs in this business, there is no need to say, no, I don't want that. You do the job. You do the job no matter what it is. You do the job that they tell you to do. If they tell you to do more, you do it. If whatever you're going to do, be it in, in this business or in anything that you have a passion for, that's the key word, passion. From the day I was probably eight years old and listening to the radio and realizing what that was, I, it, it, I was fascinated by it. It was, it was something I wanted. If you're watching this right now, I hope whatever I said have inspired you to kick it up the next level, to go in and fight. Because that's what you're going to have to do, whether it's in broadcasting, whether it's in uh, the theater, uh, whether it's in the business world, you have to constantly fight because the opportunities are not there. And you have to have a really big mouth. And that mouth has helped me a lot. Don't sit in the corner. Don't go, I don't know if I want to do this. Hey, I want to do this. That's what you got to say. And if you have that, and again, if you have patience, um, you're going to find yourself uh, with, with something that you love. I leave you with the last words, though. No matter what you do, you must love it. I've been doing this all these years. I would do it for free. Some say I do do it for free, but you must embrace it. You must love it because if you love what you do, no matter what your field, it is a hobby. This has been a 40 year hobby for me and I want to keep that. And that's so important. And I've had opportunities to try to go into other fields and I've tried other type of jobs and I've made a little bit of money, but you know what? Uh, -uh. I couldn't do it. I can't sit behind a desk. I have to follow my passion and I hope you follow yours. I was given the name Shadow Michaels, a variation of Shadow Stevens who used to be on the Hollywood Squares years ago. And I took that and I created that character to be where I became, I became a wacky night gang. You don't have wacky night guys. So I took this whole thing, I, I became Shadow Michaels, the crier of desire, the dub of love, the bust of lust, the mighty party beast of the great Northeast. And funny enough, 30 years after that, I still have people who remember Shadow. That's amazing to me.